Also covering the Casey Anthony case this morning is Vinny Politan. He's host of HLN Special Report and Prime News on HLN, as well as an anchor for In Session. Uh, Vinny, great to have you with us. You're also a former prosecutor, and you've spent a lot of time there in that courtroom over the last six weeks. Absolutely. Uh, good morning, Erica. Y yesterday, you know, it was such a day, the first day of deliberations for this jury, and it was coming off the prosecutor's final closing argument, and I think they had an advantage by going last, and they got a fresh jury, because the first day of closing arguments was long, and that jury was exhausted. They came back yesterday, refreshed, open ears, and the prosecutors went after them. So being there in court, did you notice any sort of reaction from any members of the jury, whether it was yesterday during the rebuttal from the prosecution or when they were hearing from the defense? Well, let me tell you what happened yesterday, because this jury deliberated for uh, over five hours yesterday, right? They come back at the end of the day, and the judge is about to send them home. What we always look for, those of us who cover trials for a living, right? What we always look for is when the jury enters the courtroom, where are they looking? And these folks beelined right for the jury box, not making eye contact with the defendant, the defense team, or any of those lawyers. And from my experience, that's a bad sign for the defense. If they don't even want to look at the defendant when they re-enter that courtroom. Then the judge sent him home last night for fireworks, and we'll see what happens today. You just heard from uh, our correspondent, Troy Roberts, from 48 Hours, said he spoke with a former member of Casey Anthony's defense team who said, really, she never believed necessarily that she was innocent, but the goal was to spare her from the death penalty. She's facing some very serious charges here, among them first-degree murder, aggravated child abuse, manslaughter. What are we looking at in terms of a possible sentence, if convicted? Well, this is a death penalty case. My goodness, if she's convicted of first-degree murder, that is if this jury finds premeditation or they find felony murder, then this case moves on to the penalty phase. And then the same jurors who found her guilty will decide if she lives or dies. And that, though, is for the first-degree murder. For the other charges there? Other charges? You can have life for second degree. You've got 30 years if it's an aggravated manslaughter. Uh, there's the, the, the obstruction charges, which are all a year. But she's looking at serious time. Uh, my goodness, if she's found guilty for the death of Kaylee in any of those first three counts, uh, you're looking at 15 to 30 years in prison. It can be very difficult, obviously, to read a jury, and it should be, probably, if they're doing their job correctly. But based on your experience, based on what you've seen over these last several weeks, how quickly do you think we could get a verdict? All right. It's called the Florida factor, Erica. <laughs> I've covered cases all over this country. And for some reason, juries in Texas and in Florida are just a little bit faster than the rest of the country. It's not that they don't think about this stuff as much. It just it comes quicker. That's why today on Tuesday, the second day of deliberations, I am in high alert. I'm like a firefighter waiting for that alarm to go off and slide down the pole and spring into action. The only difference is we're not eating chili down here. <laughs> All right. Well, you get that call, you give me a call. Vinny Politan in Orlando, nice Certainly. to have you with us this morning. Thanks.